Hi, this is a short uh, video on how to create some of the elements for a British phone booth, the assignment for the CG225 class. Um, as always, try to set up your file in real world scale. So with uh, the units set up under customize, we see that we have generic units and we can set this to inches or centimeters, whatever we wish. And I'm going to guess that the telephone booth is approximately nine feet tall. So I'll make the uh, phone booth around 108 inches tall. And I can do that by uh, doing a proxy or just a temporary file from the temporary object from the top view, uh, which I can set very easily, very quickly to 108 units. And this gives me. Um, Let's just do uh, four feet across and four feet deep, and we have um, a uh, tall box there. So looks like from the reference that I'm looking at, maybe it's not quite four feet across, something like three and a half feet across. And I'll just use this as a guide in designing the shape and the size of the phone booth. So to start out, I'm going to right click in my top viewport, Alt W to increase the size of the viewport. And I'm just going to make a box. Uh, notice in the top viewport, if I click and drag, let go, and then move up, it's a positive height amount. All right, in the, in the modify panel, I can set the length and width, and I'm going to guess that the height of the base is uh, around four or five inches. Okay, I'm going to right click on the transform tool, which allows me to right click the X and Y spinners, and now I know that the base is centered on the world axis, which is not a requirement, but makes your life a little easier when modeling. Okay, for the the base, um, for the the rest of the phone booth, I could actually use this piece and just center it, and then um, begin to manipulate it or I can uh, simply freeze it and freeze selection and that stays there as a, a guide so I can begin to design the rest of the booth elements. I'm going to go to the top view T and then hit Z and I can see it there. I can see the, the edge of my um, box there and I can draw the back wall. Now I won't be able to scroll up as high as I want unless I zoom out, which is nice that I can do interactively. And um, from the, the base, I would get about 103 inches. I can set this to 42. Notice I'm still in the Create panel. And I'll just make it um, an inch thick. All right, in the top view, T, Z, I can center it on the X axis very quickly because my transform type in is still in place. And uh, there's my back wall. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to do a simple Boolean. All right, so I'm going to knock out a hole in this piece here. I'm going to unfreeze all click on this I'm going to clone it and I'm going to make a uh, copy click OK I'm going to go ahead and freeze that one and get the one that is the, uh, the original one I could have chosen either one doesn't matter I'm going to throw an edit poly modifier notice I have my most commonly used modifiers in this set here, and that's done through the configure modifier sets to turn those on. I'm going to grab that back panel and I'm going to move that forward and 
squish the, the front of it here. Okay? Now just remember that this is the frozen one, the light gray. By default, frozen objects are light gray. And then I have a piece here, and I'm going to knock a hole out of it. So what I'll do actually is I will clone this one as well and I'll begin to make the shape for the knockout part and I'm going to make it about as wide as the windows and then I'm going to use my move tool to try to shape it so I can knock out this piece. Basically I'm making the door and not the side. All right, and then I'm going to stretch this through the piece so you can see that that goes all the way through. If you watch carefully, I'm going to knock this shape out of that shape. Okay, but first, since I want to make um, the corners in a different way, I'm going to just simply make this the door. I'm going to use my scale and my move tool. I'm in a uh, orthographic view, and I'm trying to approximate. I can always, I can always, always uh, adjust this later, but I'm going to try to approximate the height of the door. All right. So with with this selected, I'm going to go to the Create panel, Compound Objects. Boolean, pick operand B, and I'm going to knock that out. And now you'll see that this shape has a hole in it, like the door. And um, I can always center it very quickly if I want to. Now, in order to get the, the slats, that's so super easy. Uh, we're just going to create little boxes. For, um, to support the window, um, the glass that's in the, inside there. So this can be done a number of ways. Basically, I'll make a horizontal slat and a vertical slat, and then make sure that they are instances. So from the front view, I'm going to zoom in, and it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five to put in there. Okay. And um, I'm going to basically try to array these. It looks like I'm moving it down about 10. Okay. So I'm cancel that. I'm going to do Tools, Array. I'm going to be moving in the negative Y direction. So negative 10, move, negative 10. And I counted 5, and they're going to be instances. And looks like, um, yeah, my door is kind of big. So I can always change that, like I had mentioned, by adding an edit poly on top of the Boolean and simply um, editing this a little bit. And I can always m move these, deselect the door with the Alt key and something like that will work fine. Now those are instances, if I scoot around you'll quickly see they're not in place, so I'll put those in place. To make the vertical one, I will use the rotate and shift key, A for angle snap, and now I have a vertical slat. I don't want an instance, I want to copy. I'm not too worried about naming right now, I can have a naming party later and name everything correctly. So I will want to increase the width for it to stick into the uh, um, top and bottom. And shift drag instance. And now I can uh, interactively adjust those two. Now if I wanted to make sure that all those pieces follow the door, I can select all those pieces, deselect the door since I grabbed it in that marquee, click drag, this is the select and link button 
and you click on what's selected, drag and let go on top of what you want to be the parent. So this will serve as the parent. These are now linked to it. Same kind of thing applies for a door handle. So if I make a copy and I call it handle, you can always name things right away if you want to. And I try to um, you know, make the, the color a little bit different and just turn this into a little handle. Use my uh, axes to slide the handle around. Looks like the handle in the reference is between the second and third from bottom sl uh, window slat. Also looks like it's a little bit bigger not a big deal. I'm mainly trying to show um, some new techniques and review some other techniques. So again, select and link. You can see that it changes to a double square. Click, drag. You'll see this little marching ant line come out. You let go on top of the parent. Right click, go to move click on the door and now the handle follows as well. And don't forget you can always center it. Alright, so you're seeing some Z fighting there with the door. So what I'm going to do now is knock out um, the inside of the phone booth. I'm going to make this uh, unfrozen and what I'll do is just use that object as my base. I'm going to clone it as a copy, edit poly, and I'm going to start moving it to where I kind of want to make the shape. So let's actually select it all, and on two axes, I'm going to bring it in, X, Y, and then Z a little bit. I can hit F3, change the shading. And then I'm going to extrude through the edge, or through the surface of the other shape. I accidentally grabbed the wrong side there, wrong side, wrong side, still the wrong side. Come on, come on. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing, extrude, because I still have it active, it's blue. Alright, so now I have a base shape and I'll use this shape to knock a big hole in it. Alright, so I'm going to select that shape, create panel, compound objects, boolean, select the knockout shape by pick operand B and hit F3. And I can show you that we have a piece of geometry that is the beginning of the frame of a phone booth. Very easy to adjust afterwards. I can take the vertices after I put an edit poly modifier on it, bring it up from the base since everything is linked to the door so people can step into the booth and change into their superhero outfit. I will leave it at that and that ends uh, part one, P for perspective, part one of um, a video covering some basic techniques of modeling a phone booth including uh, boolean operations which can be very handy to create an initial shape which you can edit further. Okay, thank you.